SpongeBob SquarePants is loved by kids and grown-ups alike, and one of the many reasons for its popularity among people of all ages is the fact that while children love the colorful and quirky characters, creators also manage to slip in numerous jokes and messages that only adult viewers will get. From sexual innuendos to bringing up political issues, here are 10 SpongeBob scenes with subtle messages. In the episode Karate Choppers, Spongebob and Sandy get obsessed with karate and there have been many people who have speculated that karate is actually a metaphor for sex in this episode. And if you replace karate with the word sex in every instance, you will notice that this theory makes a lot of sense. In the episode, Spongebob is looking for Sandy to do some karate with her and when he can't find her, he decided to watch some TV, only to have her sneak up on him and engage him in some karate. Later the same night, Spongebob asks Sandy to do some phone karate with him which she declines. Later they start doing karate in public places like the supermarket and at some point Spongebob becomes so obsessed with doing karate with Sandy that he cannot concentrate on his work because he keeps seeing her everywhere. And as if those weren't enough hints already, Spongebob also has a special technique and drops phrases like safety first which is usually associated with condoms of course. In addition to that, Mr. Krabs catches the two doing karate at one point and tells them to stop as karate is poisoning their mind before smelling them as if he could smell all the karate on them and mumbling mammals. Just a second. Safety first. And now, spin technique. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The episode Your Shoes Untied begins with a very adult joke that has nothing to do with the rest of the story. We can see Spongebob watching a sea anemone on TV dancing to some pole dancing music, swinging to and fro, and our favorite Sponge even leans forwards to watch what's happening on the screen closely. However, when Gary sneaks up on him from behind, Spongebob immediately changes the channel to football and nervously claims that he was looking for the sports channel. Obviously, Spongebob was watching some late night program that wasn't meant for innocent eyes. As his nervous reaction, the quick changing of the channel and the classic excuse of watching the sports channel all show. There are several lines throughout the entire series that have characters making allusions that are rather inappropriate for a kid's program, but will luckily go over children's heads. In the season 5 episode Spy Buddies, for example, there is one scene where the Krusty Krab suddenly goes dark, which has Mr. Krabs thinking that his eyes are failing him. However, Squidward is quick to point out that he is wrong and that it's just that time of the month. Of course, this statement is usually used to refer to a woman having her period, which most kids won't understand. However, for adults, the joke behind this innuendo is made even more obvious by the fact that Squidward then goes on to point out a giant red blimp that hovers above the Krusty Krab. So this one might seem subtle at first glance, but is actually pretty hard to miss. Is it dark? Or have I put off my cataract surgery too long? No, Mr. Krabs. It's that time of the month. Merciful Neptune! After Mr. Krabs falsely accuses Squidward of stealing his first dime, a sulky Squidward decides to quit his job in the episode Can You Spare a Dime? Finding out that Squidward is unemployed, Spongebob agrees to let him stay in his pineapple for a while. Of course, Squidward soon becomes a burden on the Good Samaritan, which goes so far that he even requires Spongebob to serve him food in bed dressed in a French maid outfit. While this is obviously degrading to Spongebob, it could also be seen as sexually deviant since French maid outfits are generally associated with lewd sexual fantasies. Something that will be disregarded by kids but is surely not a joke that Nickelodeon would want in any of their children's cartoons.
The series special SpongeBob You're Fired was one of the most controversial episodes because it showed SpongeBob losing his job and subsequently going on unemployment benefits, which led to a discussion about whether the show had tried to be critical or supportive of welfare users. In this special, SpongeBob is devastated after being fired from the Krusty Krab, and Patrick tries to show his best friend the benefits of being unemployed. This includes getting free food and having a lot of time to do nothing but play and relax. After the special had aired, Fox News, for example, claimed that it was a cautionary tale on the dangers of welfare abuse, demonstrated by the fact that SpongeBob was desperately trying to return to the workforce, which would mean that the episode aligned with their beliefs. However, Al Sharpton of MSNBC saw things differently and instead defended those receiving welfare. Nickelodeon declined to comment on the issue caused by the episode, with Russell Hicks of Nickelodeon simply pointing out that the show was tapping into the news of the moment, but did not specifically address any political learnings or ideologies within the episode. In a statement, Hicks said, Like all really great cartoons, part of SpongeBob's long-running success has been its ability to tap into the zeitgeist while still being really funny for our audience. As always, despite this momentary setback, SpongeBob's eternal optimism prevails, which is always a great message for everyone. SpongeBob SquarePants doesn't have any direct connections to drugs or alcohol and runs on the children-friendly network Nickelodeon, there are several subtle drug references and jokes on the show that apparently slipped by the network censors. One of the best examples is the episode Best Day Ever, which is episode 20 of season 4 and thus a reference to the holiday of 420, the day on which cannabis culture celebrates the popular drug. Since most viewers don't keep track of the number of episodes though, a lot of people miss this subtle reference. When Patrick and Spongebob go to a jousting match in the episode Dunces and Dragons, an employee of Medieval Moments welcomes them and points them to the jousting arena. After correcting the employee's bad old English, Spongebob and Patrick make their way towards the arena giggling, while the camera stays with the employee who is dressed as a castle guard. He then points his spear towards his neck for a moment before lowering it again and muttering someday, but not today. This is a pretty dark moment in a usually quite joyful children's show, and it is quite surprising that that the SpongeBob SquarePants writers actually managed to slip this reference to suicide by Nickelodeon censors. I believe thou meant to say, writeth this wayeth. <laughs> 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 uh, someday, but not today. It seems like a lot of kids shows slip in some jokes for adult viewers that will be disregarded by children, yet the creators of Spongebob have included quite a few. One of the most popular examples is when Spongebob tells Gary not to drop the soap, which is a joke about prison rape of course. On another occasion, Spongebob is also seemingly watching a show about sea creatures when Gary comes into the room and he quickly switches the channel to sports, meaning that he had probably been watching an adult movie before. To his great popularity, SpongeBob has a pretty busy schedule trying to keep up between all of his friends and hobbies, which becomes especially obvious in the episode Overbooked, where he struggled to keep all his promises to his friends. In the midst of all the stress of running around, SpongeBob is a little late with buying a cake for Patrick's birthday. That means he has to buy the only cake the bakery has left, which is a cake that reads, Sorry about the scabbies, in purple icing. This joke goes over most kids' heads, of course, as they have no clue that scabbies is an STD that involves burrowing mites that cause rashes, but it surely makes adults shudder with disgust.
In the beginning of the episode that plays the thing, the mailman comes to deliver a letter from famous producer Barry Barracuda, saying that they will not be producing Squidward's play. Since the aspiring playwright is not around, SpongeBob decides to improvise and blows up several balloons in order to make a stand-in Squidward, which scares the living hell out of the mailman. While this may be nothing out of the ordinary in a SpongeBob episode, there is one little detail that Nickelodeon probably wished they had paid more attention to, because the balloons that SpongeBob is using are actually condoms. And before you say that they could well be long balloons, let us ask you one question. Since when do long balloons have reservoir tips? <gasps> Hello? Yoo-hoo! Mail delivery! Hello, I'm Squidward.